Hello, my buddies. Welcome to a video with Kim Tech. My name is Kim. Today, I'll be unboxing and setting up the Asus ROCK Raptor GTBE98 Pro router. This Wi-Fi 7 router should give us 6,000 square feet of coverage or 557.42 square meters and supports up to 32 devices. However, I will not be using it alone as it did get a bit weak at the very far corner of my upstairs, so I paired the Asus Zen Wi-Fi BQ16 Pro with it as nodes using the Asus iMesh system. If you're eager to get them up and running, you can jump straight to the setup section with the timestamps in the description box below. If not, let's get on with the unboxing. Let's start with the main setup by first disconnecting your old router. Unplug the power of the modem. Connect the modem to the 10GE WAN port on the back side of the ROCK router. Plug the power back to both the modem and router. Toggle the power switch on the ROCK router. The power LED will light up when the hardware is ready. When it's ready, the rest of the setup can be done via the Asus router app or the web portal, asusrouter.com. I'm using the app for the main router setup here. On the app, tap on the plus icon and select set up a new network. Tap Asus Wi-Fi routers, enable camera and scan. If it's your first time using the camera, you may be prompted to allow for camera access. Anyway, scan the QR code that is at the bottom of the ROCK router. Tap join to join the default SSID. The app will start searching for the ASUS router. Tap get started. Let the app run, detecting your internet connection status. Create your Wi-Fi network. I know the screen looks really intimidating, but the multiple bandwidths can be consolidated into one by scrolling down to the bottom and unselect separate Wi-Fi network. Then put in the SSID, which is the network name, and password for your network. Since this is your main Wi-Fi network, I recommend making the password a bit more complex. And you can always make a simpler password for a guest Wi-Fi. Anyway, for the main Wi-Fi network, use at least 8 characters with alphanumerical, but 10 characters would be better. Go ahead and tap next. It will ask if you want to create an IoT network. You can set it up now by tapping next or do it later by tapping set up later. I tap next in this setup. Set up the local login account. Create a secure password and please don't use the same password as your Wi-Fi network. Then confirm your password and tap next. The app will start setting your network and applying your settings. Then with the new firmware available, tap update. When it's done, you'll be prompted to join the new Wi-Fi network you've just created, so tap join. Let the app do its network optimization. When done, you will see the your network is operating perfectly screen. Tap finish. On the notification pop-up, you can tap enable or cancel, which you can always go back and change later. Then another pop-up after that asking if you would like to enable remote connection. You can skip or enable. It's noteworthy that this requires signing into an account like Google, 
ACES ID, Facebook, Apple, or WeChat. This remote connection is beneficial if you want to control your router when you are not at home connecting to your home network. So this setup is for you. If not, you can always set us up later. Next, let's set up the iMesh node. In other words, a satellite unit. Please make sure that it's with a compatible ASUS router device as not all ASUS router are iMesh compatible. First, if your iMesh node did not come out of the box new and you are reusing an old router unit, then reset your device. Since I used the Zen Wi-Fi BQ16 Pro as my primary router system previously, I had to reset the two units. The reset button is at the bottom of the unit. To reset, press and hold the reset button with the tip of a paper clip for 10 seconds until you see the blinking light. Then, let it do its reset. When you see the blinking green light, you can start adding the node, which can be done via the ACES router app or web portal. If you're setting up your node via the ACES router app, just tap the plus icon on the top right and select Add iMesh Node. Now, if you're setting up using the web portal, you can select iMesh under the general section, but in my experience, going to network map under the advanced settings worked more consistently for me. Once you see the device you want to join as a node, select it. Now, if you are not seeing your devices, you can tap on not seeing your devices and it will tell you some potential issues for you to look at. For me, I struggled a bit with resetting both nodes completely, so I had to reset a couple of times and really hold down the reset button for over 10 seconds. On the ACES app, you're given a selection of the location, just select the dropdown of the device location to help you identify which node is where. To select the location on the web portal, you will have to select it after the node is completely set up. Anyway, tap apply on the app setup. Then let the app configure the settings, which takes about seven minutes. Once it's done, you will get the congratulations screen and just tap OK. You'll be taken to the home screen. Oh, remember the location you selected earlier? Well, you will see the associated icon on the home screen of the node you just set up. Since I selected living room, the sofa icon is there. Moving on to setting up the guest Wi-Fi which can be done from either the ACES router app or on the web portal. In either cases, select Network. If you're using the web portal, you will see a preset of defined guest network options straight on the screen after selecting Network. For the ACES router app, tap on the plus icon next to Guest Network Pro and you'll be presented with the same preset list, which I think is very helpful. If you are a small shop, like a boba shop, you can use the captive portal for your guests. So pick the guest network setup based on your need. I am selecting guest network from this setup. Type the network name or SSID. Select password instead of open, unless you are that generous, then good for you, buddy. Again, use best practices. So. Password 123 is not recommended, even if you capitalize the P for password. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to set a password on mine. Now, if you expand the more config option, you can select which Wi-Fi band your guests can connect to, which iMesh unit they are allowed to connect to. You can limit your guests to only connect to the unit in the living room instead of other router units in your home. You can also set a bandwidth limiter to avoid your guests from using more bandwidth than you like. And there is also the option to enable AdGuard, but a login is needed for this. And by the way, the guest network Wi-Fi comes default with Wi-Fi scheduling enabled. So it would need to be disabled for the network to be permanent instead of only being active for 30 minutes, one hour, or etc. When you're done with your guest Wi-Fi setup, select or tap apply. It will start applying the settings, which your routers will be down for a bit. When it's back up, your guest Wi-Fi network is ready to be used. Finally, I want to share two other configs that are worth noting. First, it's the iMesh firmware upgrade. Normally, I would leave the firmware upgrade onto auto, 
but because this iMesh setup consists of different ASUS models, I'd recommend disabling the auto firmware upgrade and upgrade each hardware unit manually to avoid breaking this mix setup. To disable auto firmware upgrade, go to administration and firmware upgrade on the web portal. Next, on to how to remove a node. If you've added a node and you need to remove it because it doesn't work or for whatever reason that it may be, you can remove the node on the web portal by going to network maps, then click on the iMesh button, click on the trash bin icon next to its name, or from the ASUS app, tap on the house icon with the Wi-Fi to get to the iMesh Wi-Fi system and select which node you want to delete, tap the three vertical dots, and select remove device. Now that we're done with the setup, I'm going to spend some time testing the ASUS ROCK Raptor JT BE98 Pro and this iMesh setup. So please stay tuned to hear what I have to say about them in a future video. Also, it's worth noting that the setup was done with an iPhone, but if you have an Android device, the process should still be very similar. Thank you so much for staying to the end of this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you do, please click the thumbs up and subscribe. If you have any questions, please feel free to put it down below. Thank you again for watching this video and have yourself a nice day or night wherever you are, my buddies. Until next time, bye.